My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today this is another series and I've been thinking about doing this for ages when I was looking at the ZX7 crankcases and I even said it in one of the videos about I want to do videos about engine architecture um, so the layout of the engine and so on and so on and why things are done the way they are and all this kind of rubbish um, what I have here is the Z900 engine, um, this is partially way through, this is a bit different, this is not what this video will be focused on, um, this is for something else you'll see in the future, um, but this is, you know, why is this like this, you know, what is that little bar there for, all these humps and stuff are recesses for threads, what the fuck is that one for, why is it this particular way, what is that giant big hump, why are these braces in here exactly like this, what are them holes for where you can see the crank through, what are all these webbing bits for, why do they choose to do it literally on the split line, what are the pros and cons and benefits and why are things different, what the hell is all this about around the back here, what's this relief for, what are these turrets for, why is that raised and this lowered, you know, why is the back of this curved but also angled, why is the clutch housing back back cut back slashed like that? You know, why is it like this? Why, 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 why? Why isn't this shaft in the middle of this housing? What the hell is that for? That kind of thing. Not only that is internally. There's an awful lot to talk about internally what's going on and the reasons why it's done. But to do a video that encompasses most things, we're getting rid of that. What we're going to use is we're going to use this instead. So just for the shits and gigs, I thought I'd do a three-cylinder instead. This is made up of parts from loads of different models that I have for all sorts. So we have the crank assembly with the uh, balancer shaft drive gear. This is actually the R1 crank throws, as you can see, just instead turned into a 120-degree uh, triple, you know, like a Triumph. And all this has been mated so far, and as you can see, it all rotates and spins and so on. Um, and as a engine casing architectural layout engineer team would have, they would have all of these parts already given to them. Now, I know what you're thinking, no, they just design the engine. Well, no, it's not the way it works because prototyping engines, it's almost like I've done here, they make it out of bric a brac and so on and so on you do not tool up for the absolute complete engine when they're doing tests on these cranks they'll just spin the cranks you know and and so on and so on so let's just imagine that we've been given all this stuff you know so the crankshaft team said oh this crankshaft's fucking awesome and then the rod team the guys who have the most fun at the christmas party they have already done the titanium split cap rod jobbies um, we don't need all the bolts I don't even put the bolts all, all in this was actually for another model don't need all that rubbish you know um, but they've supplied us with the rods you know and these have all been constrained we don't need the bearings we don't need any of that all the oil pressure cross drilling all that rubbish has been worked out by the crankshaft teams and so on and so on we have specifications for certain things and we'll get to that throughout the series then we have the pistons we can just add them, so that's rings and everything included. Uh, ring kits, wrist pins, all the rest of it. This is where they go, so we as the engine layout team can't change this. You know, it's a three, it's a, an inline three cylinder. There's nothing really to change. The bore and stroke has been determined for us, and so on and so on. So they'll send over this model, and we've just got a model to play with. We need to package this. We need to make the box that this goes in. Again, flywheel is another assembly that is already been done for us because it's the balance of all this we we'll imagine that this is going to be like a race engine or something it's a total loss electrical system so we don't need any generator or anything shit like that next thing we've got is the balancer shaft and the drive gear from that again this is supplied by the main drivetrain uh, team because it's balanced to all of these rotating and reciprocating masses again we've mated all that together so it rock and rolls the way it should Fan fucking tastic. Um, the next thing is, and I don't know why this has done this, it's decided to all blur out, is the clutch. So the clutch, just say like with my Z900, the clutch um, was supplied by, by a different company. So we can say, you know, the clutch has been supplied to us by a different company. 
It's got all the discs and friction plates and all the drive and all the rest of it and all blah 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 blah. It's all been done for us. And actually we don't need that. We're going to use a different mechanism and that. We don't need that actually either. <laughs> I'm doing this on the fly half the time. Um, did that just make that bearing go? Yeah, it did, but it's just not playing ball. Oh, why has that done that? Pressure plate thrust bearing. Do you know what? It's starting to be a twat is solid works. I don't know why. Just started to be an arsehole. That's not involved in there. Oh, forget it. Cam drive gear, that's that one. <laughs> why are you being a tit? Pressure plate boss. No, that's the actual... Ah! See, you can get lost in all this stuff. Right, the gearbox. Let's just make the gear... I don't know why it's done them individually. It just hates me, obviously. So if we go down and select the entire gearbox... You know, the transmission team has come out with this brand new dog ring gearbox bloody thing. And we're like, oh yeah, cheers for that. So they've uh, supplied us with that. There's also the main bearings that need to go into the housing. But what we do have control of at the moment is where all this is arranged. You know, like where... And I don't know where that bloody basket's gone. <laughs> uh, clutch assembly. Clutch boss. When I told that to disappear, everything else disappeared. That bearing has semi come back. Clutch basket assembly. There we are. Why that's a totally different assembly, I have no idea. I thought it was all in with everything. But anyway, Russ, there we go. So our uh, clutch... Just say we've sorted out this front end. Just say we've done all this. And we'll go through what we have and haven't done. Um, but you know, we can move... We can rotate the clutch. But we can also... I've put a control in. It's a bit of a shite control. Um, but I've put a control in here. Where we can move... Uh, if you click on it properly, your bell end. Um, we've got uh, crank angle, uh, cylinder angle, and then we've also got this, which is basically gives us a radius to go around that controls where the clutch and the input shaft go, which then obviously denotes where the output shaft goes. You know, so we can move this. And that'll be a video talking about why you'd want to move it in certain places. Some bikes are different than others, and so on and so on. Same with the angles of the dangle for our cylinders. This is at 12 degrees from the vertical. Let's just say we change that to 8 or something like that. Uh, you know, why are these even angled in the first place? We'll go through that and uh, rebuild. And we'll go through, you know, why these things are the way they are. Or not why they are. But what choices do you have? As soon as I have, in a video, the balancer shaft, the crank, the input shaft, the output shaft, and these, uh, the selector forks, and the drum, as soon as I have their positions to find in a video, we'll lock that down. It's called a design freeze. And then what we'll do is we'll move on to stuff like where to put the oil pump and where to put the water pump and why the water oil pump is more... Uh, its location is more important than the water pump. And why? And places you can put it, the pros and cons of each, so on and so on. And then once we have the all the locations, you'll notice that the head is missing. We don't need that yet, that's just up here. Um, once we have all of these locations, we'll literally start from scratch and build um, the cylinder and the top case and the bottom case and basically build an engine like with what I started out with that Z900 casing, build the entire engine. And we'll just say this is some fictitious race engine thing. And once we've done the bottom end, we'll move to the top end. And then basically by the end of it, we should have, with all the internals in it, a engine um, you know, built up with space envelopes and operational parameters and all the rest of it, but an entire engine. It'll be a fictitious engine, but... It will give you an insight into what these packaging layout architectural teams have to do and what they have to contend with. It will also give insight into stuff like, why is my fucking oil filter there and why is this there? 
this is going to answer a lot of those questions. Any road, I hope that makes sense. This is just the introduction, as usual, so people aren't saying, why have you done that and why have you done that? Like I say, this is a made-up engine of parts, of CAD that I have from all sorts. H2R gearbox, can't remember what clutch it is, a Kawasaki one, I think it might be the, even the ER5 one or the GPZ500 one. Bearings that are out of, well, these bearings are out of, God, fucking loads of things. Suzuki, I believe. Uh, flywheel, can't remember what that flywheel is out of. No, can't remember what that flywheel is out of. Uh, crank is off, uh, the crank and the balancer shaft is off a cross-plane jobby. This is a 2008 R1. These rods are, I can't remember, I think they might even be Ducati rods. Um, you know, just a load of bits that I could find that were about the right size and like I say, there'll be some more to come, obviously the oil pump, water pump and so on and so forth. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.